This week's Pilch Point with Abram Pilch is proudly powered by Pure VPN. The best way to protect your privacy online is with Pure VPN. You can uh, hide your online activities, say goodbye to regional restrictions, and improve your streaming quality. Plus, it's available for almost all your devices. You can get a special price right now by going to pilchpoint.live slash purevpn. So we teased this a few minutes ago that we're going to talk about um, a utility for Windows uh, that you will absolutely not be able to install <laughs> from the store. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a piece of the story. But sure. let's, let's talk about what the story is. So first of all, I have a question for you, Scott. How important okay. do you think it is to be able to control your default web browser? For a lot of people, it's really important. Um, some people never touch it, but for the most part, a lot, you know, a lot of users, you know, there, there's the long running joke, right? What's Internet Explorer good for? Downloading Chrome. So, right. So, but this is an interesting question because not not just because you might want to switch to Chrome or switch to Firefox or switch to Opera or one of the other third party browsers, uh, which by the way is a great example of of people switching from a default, right? Right. Uh, I was really shocked when Chrome came out all those years ago that it did as well as it did because I kind of figured. People like to go with the flow and they're just going to sure. keep using Internet Explorer just because it's preloaded. I mean, that was the whole basis of the antitrust lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. um, that Microsoft lost. But in the end, uh, Google made a better mousetrap and people people used it. Now, people, so people are constantly downloading Chrome and some other browsers like Firefox. And it's fairly easy to make to change your default browser in Windows 10. But by the way, just to get back to the de default browser or not, if you think about it, the amount of things where you actually need your default browser is becoming less as we, we become more of a web-based, um, you know, work as people have more web-based workflows. Because if you're already accessing Gmail in your web browser and you click a link that somebody mailed you, it's just gonna open in that browser anyway. So you're really talking about what, like when you're in Slack, when you're in Skype, when you're in kind of external external programs that are outside your browser, True. somebody sends you a link, you click it, and you want it to open in your browser of choice. And obviously Microsoft would like that browser of choice to be Edge. But you, if you installed Chrome, you might want that to be Chrome. Now, when you first install Chrome on Windows 10, or I believe on seven or eight, you are given the choice, hey, do you want to set this as my default browser? The program asks you, you hit a button, and yes, it's there. And if you don't hit a button, let me show you how easy it is to change that in Windows 10. So I'm showing, sharing my screen here, and here you can see the Windows 10 default apps menu and what it looks like. And here there's an entry for something called web browser. And I click this and I can see all the browsers that are installed on this computer, Edge, believe it or not, Internet Explorer, and, and Chrome. Or if I had other ones, there they would be. And I pick one and I choose change it and that is the end of the story. But this week there was a lot of controversy because Windows 11 does not make it that easy. Um, so let's take a look at Windows 11. So Windows 11, first of all, I, I'm not going to reinstall Chrome while we watch here, but when you first install Chrome, uh, let me see if this happens when I open Chrome. Sometimes it happens when you open it. They'll say, oh, Chrome isn't your default browser. Set as default. Now, what is the behavior you would expect when I click set as default, Scott? To open the default settings screen. Would you expect to open the screen or to change the setting for you? Uh, only because of some of the previous behaviors at this point opening the settings screen. But uh, ideally, I would like it to to make the settings change. So in Firefox, it does that. In Chrome, however, it just takes you there. And where it takes you, the default apps menu is, wait a second, here I am and I'm looking at default apps and I don't see a web browser choice, right? The way that it's organized is it's organized by all the apps I have installed. So what if I want to, to change this? 
Well, what I have to do is I have to go to the app that I want to be the default browser, in this case, Chrome, open it, open its submenu. And instead of there being a default browser choice, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, something like 20 different uh, choices here that I can that I can assign to it. So there was a big controversy. The Verge wrote a story about it uh, this week, which a lot of people picked up on, which was, hey, Microsoft is being unfair. They're making it hard to change your default browser in an attempt in you know, reading into Microsoft's uh, intentions here that, hey, maybe Microsoft wants to make it harder to do this so you'll stick with Edge. But I do want to point out that my, that what Microsoft would say is, and they're not wrong, we're giving you more fine-grained control because these are all file extensions that you can choose from and you can decide, okay, I want to assign my .html files to Chrome, but I want to assign my WebP files or my uh, or my, uh, you know, shtml files to Edge or Firefox. So you have more fine green control. The only ones that really, really matter, though, when someone sends you a link are HTTP and HTTPS. And if you click those, you'll get your choice of browsers. I can select Chrome, and you'll notice when I click OK, it actually changes both HTTP and HTTPS for me. They seem to be linked. So uh, <laughs> then why, the only why are they different settings? That's a good question, isn't it? That's a good. If I change, if I go now and I change another one, what happens? Will it let me? No. Okay. So I have to. <laughs> right. It is weird when you think about it that way. Um, so, so bottom line here is, if you only changed the HTTP or HTTPS, which will change the other one, will change the other. That would be really all of your links. And then maybe change the HTML and the HTML if you care about opening, if you have locally downloaded HTML files. The others don't matter so much. Perhaps you even want a separate reader for your PDF. I mean, I like to use Foxit Reader. Some people like Adobe Reader. Uh, and that will change it for you. But I think there's a lot of confusion and a lot of annoyance because it doesn't say default browser. If Microsoft just said default browser, uh, instead of giving you all these granular choices, then, I, then people would find it easier. I also find it very weird that Chrome cannot make the change for you, but Firefox can. So clearly there's a way to do it, and maybe Google has to uh, figure out how to update uh, Chrome so that it properly does this change. So that's how easy, if you know what to change, it's not hard. Um, but there's another thing that's going on, and it's actually been going on for a long time, it's been going on since Windows 10, but I want to call attention to, which is that no matter what you pick, you just saw me pick Chrome as my default browser. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to use Windows Search. And let's say I, I search for, let's say I search for uh, plugins, right? And I click it. You're going to see that it doesn't give me the choice to open it in Chrome. It wants to open it in Edge. Why is that? I set my default browser, right? What's going on? I set my default browser. It's not, it's not obeying me. Now, let me go to the news widgets thing. So this is another part of Windows 11. In Windows 10, you have a similar thing on the taskbar these days where you see, where you see news items and you can click them and, and they'll launch. Wait a second. Once again, it's loading an edge, not loading in the, my default browser choice of Chrome. Nothing I change in the settings will fix that. Microsoft is disobeying what, and they've been doing, it's not a new problem. It's, a, it's been going on since, uh, it's been going on. So, since Windows 10. So there's a pro, an app called Edge Deflector. Now, for I guess because I said it was okay before and I've installed and uninstalled this Edge Deflector program before, it's not going to give me the warning. But if you try it, the first time you try to install Edge Deflector, you will get a Windows smart screen error, which says, we don't know if you can trust this program. And it actually hides the run it anyway um, option. You have to like click a link to learn more, and then you can click run it anyway. So Windows really tries to stop you uh, from installing this program. So I'm going to install it. 
And the next thing I need to do after I install Edge Deflector is I have to go back to my default apps menu. And it's weird. I have to go to Edge Deflectors option. And it has like a little option here for Microsoft Edge. And I have to pick Edge Deflectors. It's weird. I don't know why I have to do that. But there you have it. Now watch what's going to happen when I search for when I search for a site. So I'm search for hardware this time. Um, this is using Bing, which is built into the internal window search. You're going to see that it opened in Chrome, my default browser, right? And same thing, same thing here. If I open, see when I open something from the news app. There it is. So Edge Deflector uh, takes, is kind of fooling Windows into thinking that you are, that it's going to Edge when it's actually taking that request and deflecting it to whatever your default browser is. So anyway, uh, there's a perfect example, an Edge Deflector of an app that Microsoft would never want you to have because it fouls up what they're doing. Right? They don't want you to be able to right. do that. But anyhow, it's pretty simple. We have a how-to on this on tomshardware.com right now on how to change your default browser in Windows 11. But I think the story is not just how to do it, but by giving you what actually seems to be a little bit more con granular control over your default browser... Microsoft has also made it more difficult to change or less intuitive or perhaps less intuitive. Yeah. And certainly the business of launching edge when you are in of ignoring your browser choice, when you're using their program, using their search or their news widgets is, is really not excusable. Yeah. I, it's so the the edge deflector is a clever solution to the problem because they're using protocol mapping, um, and since what you chose were HTTP and HTTPS, and the links that you clicked without knowing it were edge colon slash slash tom's hardware dot com, um, the the idea of another app claiming ownership over the edge protocol is a clever solution to the problem. And I really like that. I had thought about doing something similar in the past, but eh. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I wonder if there's a way to do it with, with the registry. I don't know if there's a way to change that in the registry uh, without installing know. it, but I haven't found one. So anyway, that's, uh, I find it to be a pretty, a pretty useful thing for folks who now, of course you don't have to use Microsoft search, right? You could just go search in your browser and sure. you don't have to use Microsoft's news widget at all. I generally don't. And it's actually one thing that you can't change is you can't change the search engine either. So if you want to use windows search and hope to get Google results, you will not. That is, no one, I don't, I don't know of anyone who's figured out a way to change that to Google results as opposed to Chrome. I mean, as opposed to Bing, but uh, anyway, so that's the story. I mean, it's been some negative publicity for Microsoft. Um, as far as the settings changes, I'm not really sure that they're, that they're in the wrong here. I mean, maybe they should have um, labeled it better. I mean, certainly the whole, the whole app process, we have to pick the app that you want rather than picking the function that you want and then choosing the app uh -huh. is weird. Unfortunately, uh, anybody with an iOS device will recognize that process because it's exactly how it works on iOS uh, when they, in iOS, what is it now, 14, the one that's out now, um, they introduce default apps for a couple of things. Uh, browser and mail. I just I I want to say that again. iOS fourteen finally introduced the ability to set default apps. Uh, <laughs> um, you have to go, like you have to go to the settings app and then go down to Safari 
and change it to Chrome or Edge or DuckDuckGo or whatever browser. But you have to you have to go into an app to be able to change it. You have to go to to Mail to be able to change the default client to to Outlook or or Gmail or whatever. It's I and I'm not I am not defending this bizarro world behavior. I just want to put that out there. I don't like I don't I think the UX is wrong on iOS and on Windows 11. Yeah, I mean, it just makes sense that you would look for the function that yeah. you're looking for, uh, which is how it is in Windows 10. Right. So anyway, the latest, the latest people, controversy from Microsoft. People think in terms of tasks, right? Humans are task-based people. We've, we've used for years an example of Bank of America uh, with people losing their debit cards in the ATMs, their solution over iteration after iteration after iteration was to create a thing that sucks the cards back in and runs them through a shredder if you've left them too long, rather than giving you your card back before the money came out, which would have been the solution. <laughs> it, was a, it would have been a 10-second solution because people aren't going to drive away or walk away from the ATM without the money that they went there for but right. they will their card because they're not thinking about the process. They're thinking about the task default browser versus HTTP and HTTPS. Nobody's thinking in terms of that. Right. Exactly. So it's just, it's just weird. Yeah. I mean, also I'm not really sure how many people want to have a different browser for HTML and HTM files. Like it doesn't right. make a lot of sense to me, but true. I, I can see, uh, pushing something like PDF off to a different, off to a different right. thing, but that doesn't have to be part of the default browser. That can right. be exactly. that can be a PDF task. Right. So it doesn't make Whatever. a lot of sense. No, but that unfortunately not making a lot of sense seems to be the norm these days. So, <laughs> you know, it is. It is what it is. I definitely appreciate uh, <laughs> the information and and the the edge deflector tool is something I am really fascinated by. I'm impressed with uh, with the idea. It's pretty cool. So definitely, thanks for bringing that. And I look forward to what we talk about next time. Hello YouTube, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Pilch Point with Avram Pilch. Uh, if you did, please subscribe to our channel and of course hit the notification bell since subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, and if you've got topics you'd like us to discuss in the future, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, if you don't want to follow us on YouTube, that's okay. There's a lot of other ways that you can follow our content. You can find all of that by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all the different ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.